Hi everyone, I hope you're staying safe and doing well. This lecture covers some of the syntactic issues that students face in their writing and provides strategies for addressing these issues. It is an interactive lecture, so for each strategy, I'll ask you to pause the recording and complete a short exercise. You should gather all of the exercises in a document and submit them to receive credit for this assignment. There is a link to a Building Syntax Exercises Google Doc on Blackboard. An early syntactic issue that students might have in their writing is how to use conventions to differentiate sentences. If you look closely at most students' writing, there will be grammatical sentences there, but it takes some students a while to learn how to show this. This isn't an issue isolated to early elementary school either. When I taught 7th grade, I had several students who still did not know how to mark sentences conventionally. With these students, we need to emphasize sentence basics. Conventionally written sentences start with a capital letter, include a subject and a predicate, use ending punctuation, and express one or more complete thought. Here's an example of a student who hasn't quite gotten a handle on sentence basics yet. In her first paragraph, she wrote, I am a color crayon. No one would use me. I was an ugly green. They would use pretty pink and blue instead. I fell out of Stacy's desk that night, and in the morning, someone stepped on me and smeared me all over the floor. And then the teacher saw it, and Sandy got in trouble. There was only half of me, so she threw me in the garbage. Well, it was kind of fun, because there was a brown crayon right then, and we fell in love. So three days later, I was Mrs. Brown. This is a great story. It's full of action and detail, but it's hard to read because she hasn't marked where the sentences start and end. To revise this piece of writing, she would need to add a period after crayon, capitalized N and no, and add a period after me, green, and instead. I would recommend taking out the and between floor and then, putting a period in between, and capitalizing then. We also need a period after trouble. The T in trouble needs to be capitalized, and we need a period after garbage and crayon. R in right needs to be capitalized. Finally, we need a period after Mrs. Brown. Notice that I'm not fixing everything. I possibly could in this paragraph. I'm not adding an apostrophe to Stacy's. I'm not worrying about floor being capitalized incorrectly. I'm not fixing the spelling of half or through or garbage. I'm not adding any commas. For this and any sort of direct instruction, it's important to be focused on the skill you're trying to teach. Not doing this can be overwhelming for students and make them hate school or writing. Now you try it with the second paragraph. Pause the lecture now and rewrite the second paragraph to mark sentence structure by capitalizing the first word of each sentence and inserting ending punctuation at the end of each sentence. The original unedited text is available on the exercises document under exercise 1, so you don't need to retype everything. Once students get a handle on the basics, often they will spend a while producing structurally simple sentences. Here the goal is to work with students to build some syntactic complexity in their writing. One way to do this is through what are called telescoping sentences. These are sentences that start short and simple. The challenge is to continuously make them longer by adding detail. You can see an example of a telescoping sentence using the link from Blackboard. It starts with the sentence, I made tea. If you click on tea, it becomes, I made a cup of tea. And if you click on tea again, it becomes, I made a cup of strong tea. Notice that the example illustrates all sorts of ways we can add syntactic complexity to a simple sentence, including modification, compounding, new phrases, etc. Take a minute to click through all of the possibilities in this example. Pause now. Now I'd like you to try creating your own telescoping sentence with at least 10 expansions, starting with the sentence, he walked his dog. Pause the lecture now and figure out 10 expansions of the sentence. Obviously, I don't expect you to create a web text like the T example, so you can just write the sentence 10 times, adding a detail or description each time. 
The original sentence is available on the exercises document under exercise number two. Another very effective way to develop syntactic complexity is through sentence combining. For this strategy, you ask students to figure out ways to combine shorter sentences into longer ones, which leads to a variety of types of sentences. For example, consider this series of sentences. The cars come cruising up Broadway. The cars are glittering. The paint is harsh. The paint is metallic. The paint is highly waxed. There is a rumble of exhaust. The rumble is great. Lights explode softly on the scene. The lights are for the street. The scene is primitive. Notice that as a reader or listener, this is a challenging set of sentences to get through. This is because the syntactic structure is repetitive and follows the same simple sentence pattern for the most part. If we ask students to combine some of the sentences, they might come up with something like this. The glittering cars come cruising up Broadway. Their harsh paint is metallic and highly waxed. There is a great rumble of exhaust. The street light explodes softly off the primitive scene. Or, the cars that glitter come cruising up Broadway. Their paint is harsh, metallic, and highly waxed. There is a great rumbling of exhaust. Street lights explode softly off the scene, which is primitive. In fact, there are infinite ways to combine these sentences. These are just a few of them. Notice that the revised sentences convey the same meaning, but they do so in more syntactically interesting ways, which makes them more readable. Now you try it. Here's a paragraph that could use some sentence combining. The hamburger patties are grayish pink. They are grainy like oatmeal. They have already been laid out. They are on the griddle. The griddle is black. The griddle is old. They begin to sizzle in a puddle. The puddle is greasy. Pause the lecture now and revise by combining some of the sentences. The original passage is available on the exercises document under exercise 3. Once students start to build some syntactic complexity, though, often they will create unwieldy sentences. This is something I've seen as early as elementary school, and it's an issue with many of my graduate students, too. For example, consider this rambler. I was happy to walk down the aisle as a bridesmaid in my sister's wedding, but I was very embarrassed when I stumbled in the middle of the ceremony, for when I recovered, I looked up and saw my sister, and I thought she was going to faint because I could see her standing in the doorway, waiting to begin her own walk down the aisle, and her face was all white. She looked like she was going to throw up. Notice that it's so long and complex that it's hard to follow the structure and meaning. I even ran out of breath multiple times reading it. Here's one possible revision. I was happy to walk down the aisle as a bridesmaid in my sister's wedding. However, I was very embarrassed when I stumbled in the middle of the cer ceremony, especially when I recovered. I looked up and saw my sister, and I thought she was going to faint. I could see her standing in the doorway, waiting to begin her own walk down the aisle. Her face was all white, and she looked like she was going to throw up. Like sentence combining, there are infinite ways to break up this rambler. This is just one of them. Notice that the revised sentences convey the same meaning, but they do so in a much more engaging and readable way. Now you try it. Here's a rambling sentence that could use some reining in. Although the blue whale has been protected for over 30 years and its numbers are increasing, especially in the North Pacific where whale hunting has been banned, it is still at risk of extinction and its habitat has, is being polluted by waste from oil tankers and its main food, the plankton, is being killed off by harmful rays from the sun which can penetrate the Earth's atmosphere because there is a huge hole in the ozone layer over Antarctica. Pause the lecture now and revise the sentence by breaking it into smaller sentences. The original passage is available on the exercises document under exercise number four. The final syntactic issue I'd like to address is wordiness. In some ways, this issue is created through schooling. Often teachers are pushing students to write longer texts, which sometimes creates what I like to call fluffy writing. This tends to be an issue with older or more advanced students, and it's another issue that I see even in college and graduate school level writing. 
Let's look at an example. The cool, fresh breeze, which came like a storm in the night, lifted me to the exhilarating heights from which I had been previously suppressed by the incandescent cloud in the learning center. Now I can appreciate the work that went into writing this sentence. The student clearly has a handle on how to use descriptive language and incorporated detail into their writing. Things like using multiple modifiers, unusual words, and excessive description, though, can actually interfere with the reader's ability to understand a piece of writing. One way to revise this sentence would be, the cool breeze was a refreshing change from the muggy classroom air. Note that this sentence still maintains the original meaning, but it's much clearer and easier to understand. Like the other examples, there are many ways I could have revised the sentence. This is just one possibility. Now you try it. Here's a couple of sentences that could really stand to lose some wordiness. The game was spectacularly wonderful. I didn't score the defining goal, but I did manage dexterously to pass the ball to my amazingly talented teammate who adroitly kicked it between the goalie's desperately reaching fingers and the rigid frame of the right-hand corner of the goal. How could you rewrite it to eliminate wordiness and be more straightforward? Stop the recording now and complete exercise number five in the exercises document.